of the first years of the clubs back at first watch in Maitland. Next year is Club 6193's 25th anniversary. Oh, wow, that's yeah. very impressive. But in the last nine years, she has been, she has seen many changes and has experienced much joy. And then heartache, and then joy again. The title of her speech is Looking Forward. Maybe another 25 years. <laughs> Please welcome Michelle. My first Toastmaster meeting nine years ago was a riot. We did a backwards meeting. Wow. So you started with the evaluations, and then you had the speeches. I was hooked. <laughs> Absolutely hooked. It was a vibrant club, probably about as many members as we have now, and I had just heard so many stories about the days, the days of history and how many club members we had, and all the greatness that came out of our club. And I was excited to be a member, and it was a fun time to be a Toastmaster. And then, people's work schedules changed. They moved all together. They fell out of Toastmasters, and our club got smaller and smaller and smaller. It wasn't anything really that we were doing wrong. It was just the way it was. All of a sudden, I remember one day going into the meeting, 7.30, right now, right? Right. Open up the door, and I see Mike McGraw. I'm like, good morning, Mike. How are you? He's like, I'm ready. I'm like, you ready? I'm ready. Well, 7.30. Why don't we start the meeting? Pound the gavel and immediately call a five minute recess. Maybe give people a little bit more chance to get here. It ended up being Mike and myself that day. <laughs> oh. How do you hold a meeting with two people in the room? There were some struggles with our club. Attendance was one. <laughs> Membership recruiting was another. And then, well, Debbie and, and Denise, they were a part of our club, but they could only come so often. Denise wasn't quite retired yet. And of course, we had Ed Goddard. And then what happened is the club actually folded. That was in 06. 06, 07 time frame. We didn't know what to do. We'd lost so many members due to jobs and just different schedules that they had, and we couldn't find any new people. So we folded. Ed was actually in the hospital, he had leukemia, and I'm so grateful for the day that he was out of the hospital and he was leukemia free. Not only for him, but also for all of us. Because what happened is he took it on as his mission to bring life back into this club. He was given life, and he wanted to share it with our club. And it was miraculous. Absolutely miraculous. There were dual members a part of our club. I know Roxy was recruited to come into our club. Denny, of course, and Denise came back, and we're so happy that you're here. Denny, Ed brought all of his friends from all of his other clubs. Not a whole lot of people that I knew. But it didn't matter. We had people. We had warm bodies in a room. That's what it boiled down to. That's all I thought. We need warm bodies in a room. But we really didn't have a club. We had warm bodies in a room. And then it dawned on me. There's a difference. But we just kept plugging along, plugging along. And you know what happened? Tim found us. Nine months later. <laughs> <laughs> and it was hard that first year uh, that he was a member of our club and once again we were looking for warm bodies but here's what happened a few weeks ago some of you were here 
I'm sorry, let me go back. As I remember one of the officer trainings that I went to, Ron Park was giving a presentation on building membership. And he was talking about the different types of clubs that we had. Vibrant club where everybody wants to be a member. Then there's the steady and even type of clubs where status quo is okay. And then he said the most terrible words I've ever heard. A sick club. Mm. It was too much to bear. Because it hit home. That's where we were. Mm. We had warm bodies. We were a sick club. We had no energy. We had no life. And then what happened is we started when there was no viable solution at all. We'd done all the membership recruitment we could possibly do. We were bribing people to come in, and it wasn't working. And basically, when there was no viable solution at all, I did the only thing that I could do. I prayed. I prayed so much for this club. And I am so grateful that I am standing here today with answered prayer. Jeremy, I'm so grateful that you're part of our club. Absolutely. Here, Desmond, you are such a heart-driven person that I'm so grateful that you're here. And through each of our members that we have here today, this is what makes our club so great. And what did it for me was about a month ago, you guys remember Stephanie Byrne was here, our Division C governor, Division D governor. And she was bragging about our club. She was talking about how awesome this club is and how we are a role model for other clubs and other clubs talk about us. Well, I never thought that would happen. But I gotta tell you, it felt good. <laughs> it felt really good. And you know what? It's because of all of us. We are a team, right, Denise? Right. That's right. Right. And we now have light. This isn't warm bodies. Desmond came up to me after Stephanie had given us kudos. Because what makes our club so great? He was like, what is it? What do we have? It's each, Mitch, you're a handful, but I want you to remember <laughs> this club. <laughs> Every single person brings their own personality and their own life into our club. And Roxy? You've helped us with structure within the club. That was one of my major faults. I'm more like, the wind's blowing this way, I'm going this way. <laughs> and there needs to be structure. There's a format. So there's been a lot of changes with our club. Here was the roster that we had in 2007. Here is the roster that we have today. Wow. We can accomplish so much as a team, and we've been able to do that. And I just want to say thank you to all of you for being a part of this club. It has brought life back into our club, and we are just, we're having a great time. And that's the point. It needs to be a fun and encouraging place to learn. And I don't know if the word fun is in the mission statement, but I'd be all over rewriting that mission statement. <laughs> Anyways, this is my speech to say thank you for all of you for being a part of our club and making Articulators what it is today. I am so happy to be a member of this club.